Shalom. Well, it's the end of December. It's 19 degrees outside in Chicago. Around the country, hundreds if not thousands of passengers have been stranded at airports due to the weather conditions in the East Coast. Hundreds of flights have been canceled and being rescheduled. What better time of the year for us to start talking about Pesach? That's what we'll do this Shabbat when we read Parshat Vayera and we begin to read about the events that led up to the exodus from Egypt. Yitziat Mitzrayim. When our ancestors were enslaved in the land of Egypt, and eventually God took them out of Egypt and brought them to freedom in the land of Israel. The seeds are planted, the uh, concepts are there for us to study and pursue, and we find it right in the story of the Ten Plagues, which most of us recount the night of our Pesach Seder, some interesting inf- uh, tidbits of information that we should pay attention to and then perhaps share with those who celebrate Pesach with us. For example, when we talk about the plagues, the ten plagues, we always know that we mention Dam and Svardea and Kinim, which are translated as blood and frogs and lice. Uh, But there's a problem there. Lice might be plural and singular in English, but in Hebrew it's clear that Kinim is plural. But when we talk about Svardea, it doesn't actually mean frogs, it means frog. It's in the singular in Hebrew. And so we need to figure out what is it that the text meant when we say dam tsvardea kinim, uh, blood frog and lice, and not blood frogs and lice in the Hebrew. The Midrash that appears in the Talmud in the name of Rabbi Akiva teaches that according to Rabbi Akiva, uh, the plague was actually a plague of frog and not a plague of frogs. Why? Because the Egyptian magicians were able to bring a plague of frogs just like God did, And so God had to outdo the magicians. Instead of bringing a plague of frogs, tiny little frogs that were here, there, and everywhere, according to Rabbi Kiva, God brought one frog, one great big frogzilla-sized frog who sat on the Egyptians and created havoc wherever he went. That was the plague. It was a plague of frog, not a plague of frogs. Not sure we can sing about that, but it's an interesting take on what the verse is trying to teach us. In more recent years, Rabbi Daniel Schwerber, a professor of rabbinics at Bar Ilan University, suggested that in fact the word svardea comes from two words, uh, tsipor yeda, a bird of knowledge, and claims that there was a certain type of bird that would perch its, itself on the heads of crocodiles in the Nile or elsewhere in Egypt, peck away at the parasites between the teeth of the crocodiles, and that's how these birds survived. And he claims that as a result, what the Tzvardea really refers to was a kind of crocodile and a plague of crocodiles that uh, enveloped the Egyptians. So according to the Midrash, it might not have been frogs, it might have been frog. According to recent scholarship, it might have been crocodiles. Our, ma- our imaginations can, can take us to all sorts of places when we spend the time studying Torah and trying to figure out some of the secrets of the Torah that are not explicit. But to do that, We have to make the time. Here's wishing that in the new year, everybody will make more time for the study of Torah, and then we can enrich each other's knowledge and understanding of what the text is trying to tell us. Shabbat Shalom.